This is a clip from the Canon Podcast. To hear the full episode and get access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month. Is there something developing on our left? Because having a look at our new look, I suppose you could call it, left-hand side with Kai Habits in terms of the positions and role he's picking up. Again, there's a whole other conversation about yeah. how we describe those roles and whatever, but let's not go near, near that now. Habits is objectively on our left-hand side most of the time. So there is different dynamics, there's different spaces being opened up. Do we see a new role or a new left-back, let's say, slot being created in our team? And do we see different things being asked of our left backs? Because I watched Tierney um, against United the other night, and he looked like the prettiest guy in the room again. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He he was he was kind of you know he was he was filling up the right spaces. He looked dynamic. He looked fresh. He looked sharp. I wanted someone a bit more straight lines than sort of you know Habits, who is a bit more floaty and a little bit more sort of cutting in on himself and finding the spaces and whatever. So I wonder, you know, firstly on Tierney, whether you, you think there might be a slot for him, but more broadly, how you see the left-hand side sort of shaping out. Because I, I, I do think, I think there's a role for Zinchenko in this team. And I would love Zinchenko to play 30, 40 games a season, because I think that is something he could do and he could do really well for us. But there's also another part of me that says there are certain games where I think we would suit a more uh, someone who's more comfortable in in more defensive zones, someone who is possibly a stronger one v one specialist, or possibly slightly better in the kind of second line. I think Zinchenko can get transition past a little bit, little bit too easily. So yeah, how how do you see our left hand side developing in terms of the defensive side of things? I mean, naturally, buying timber meant that you know Kieran Tierney's role infinitely improved. I mm. mean. It was something that everybody kind of saw, right? You know, I, again, I was I was somebody that was really vocal. I hate that a lot of times on fans that we look at what we see of last season and say that we must adhere to those specific zones um, always. For example, Ben White as a role. Why can't Kieran Tierney do the role? Not on the right, of course. It would be on the left. But why can't we have one fullback being a little bit more overlapping on the left and then have a more inverted option on the inside on the right? Why can't that be a case if you've seen it so consistently last season be the opposite, right? Like for me, we need to be a little bit more flexible about that. And the reason I say flexible is I think, look at our defense, mate. Like it's an entirely chameleon type defense. I can give you right now almost 12 formations that we can do with the collective. Mm. I saw um, that on The Athletic, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it was a beautiful, uh, you know, article that talked about it. And it really got me thinking. And when we start to talk about the development of our left back role, I also look at Kieran Tierney's play, it looked sharp beyond just roll, by the way. Like, his receiving, his yeah. passing in to midfield was very sharp. And I do wonder, and look, it's no it's no kind of surprise that he may have lost his way last season, by the way. And, and I don't think, I don't buy this idea that he would ever kick up a fuss in training. But I do buy the fact that he would lose motivation if he's never playing, and no matter what he does in training, may, meant that he's not given a fair shot because I do believe just to briefly supplement that did you see his, his uh, comments in the athletic he totally. basically he, ba- he basically yeah. said that he basically yes. said look I was available I did everything I could yes blank space <laughs> well exactly and, and that's what I was getting on to like I feel ultimately we've had a conversation with him and he, he is staying I, I think there's zero doubt in my yeah, mind I that he so. leaves at this point and, and you know what makes me believe that it's his play on the field it is mm. so sharp that you see that different kind of application mm. for me we can talk about roles till the cows come home. There is definitely a role to put Kieran Tierney in the squad. For me, he is still one of the best overlapping fullbacks in the league um, in that role. Why we wouldn't have that, especially when you look at Kai Havertz when you, as a target man aspect and his aerial ability, mm-hmm. who's one of the best crossers in the squad besides Marquinhos, Kieran Tierney. Mm-hmm. Like, um, when we talk about future iterations, by the way, when we talk about uh, strikers down the line, who would fit one of that aerial dominating kind of box strikers Kieran Tierney. Um, So, like, I've never understood this push to get him out because I've always felt that we need to be more flexible in our approach to how we see things. Mm -hmm. I think that Kieran Tierney is having a developing role with Timber, but I also think it's not just with Timber. I think that he has a little bit more of an important role to play with Trossard and Neil Smith-Rowe. That pod, for me, was the best part of the Manchester United game. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, um, you know, a shock, in my opinion. I mean, you've got... 
Trossard, who was a lot more comfortable receiving deep lately, and he was a lot more comfortable taking on those ball-playing responsibilities. That's what Kieran Tierney needs, by the way. And it also allows Emile Smith-Rowe to receive in pockets that are more dangerous, that he's not burdened with being a build-up person. I thought the balance, and the reason I'm harping on this, means that all three of those players maximize their abilities, and the only thing that we might not maximize is Trossard's final third ability in that role. But by having him deeper and play, yes, the Santi-esque role, I'm going to pat myself narcissistically on the back. It's something I <laughs> really wanted to see. Well done. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought it just played brilliantly what Tierney maybe struggles yeah. with, right, in terms of yeah. a build-up sense. So, look, we're, we're going to be seeing a new role for him, but I also think that the mentality shift in Kieran Tierney kind of reflects his importance in the team. And like anybody, you want to feel wanted. Uh, no matter how studious you might be, and how focused you might be in your line of work, if your boss is never telling you and giving you almost a good job, and, and here, here's a platform for you to shine again, it's very difficult to get yourself up, no matter how focused you are as a professional. So I, I do think I that we see more minutes. And I, and I th- also think from a, it's a good point, because I think from a man management perspective, if you're Arteta and you're saying, how do I keep Kieran Tierney at my club this summer? You can get him in your office and say, look, left-hand side is completely changing. I've just yeah. signed someone who can flip the dynamics on the right-hand side. Yeah. Show me. Show me. Go out there and show me that, that there's something I'm missing. Like I, I, I think from a man management perspective, maybe that sharpness and that freshness has come from a conversation where he's basically said, look, I, there, there isn't a set idea at the moment. And you yeah. know, this, this always comes down to people saying, what, you signed Havertz with no idea? It's like, no, 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 no. Mikel's got ideas. I'm sure he's got ideas. He's a not only just a UEFA pro licensed football coach who's done his done his years. No, nah, mate, you're won- wrong. You're off. He's got no <laughs> clue. It is just you know flying it, by the seat of vibes. his pants. It's just vibes. Yeah. I'm sure he's thought about it, but in the same token, you have to go into it's like any any situation. You go into like a a business negotiation with anyone, and you you're trying to start I don't know a clothing company, and you and you go into the room, and you have your rigid idea. This is how we'll do it. This is how logistics will work. This is what the clothes will look like. This is, and if someone offers you something, and you just you're not open to it, you might miss a huge opportunity to change it. Could it be a clothing and lifestyle business, whatever it is? You know, yeah. forget the analogy, but but it's the idea of remaining open. And I'm sure from a man management perspective, Mikel can look, look at Tini and go, look, mate, like this whole dynamic with less of a straight lines, box to box, let's call in that with, with Granite Xhaka type player, could be completely different. So go out there and show me. And as you as you mentioned, with the height of Havertz, with the development of the team, Kieran Tini could look you know, very, very different. Just briefly to touch on before we move on, if we do broadly see Havertz in the left eight and it starts to sort of function and click, which is a whole other, uh, other question, what would you expect to, to, what type of role would you expect the left back to play if let's say we are, it's hard to say, isn't it? Because of timber, what do you expect? Uh, maybe I won't be so prescriptive. What, what do you expect the role to be dependent on whether that side's inverting or not? So I think the issue is that you need to have somebody that's a lot more dual dominant though, mm. because look at it because Martinelli's not leaving the left hand, the left wing, right? And immediately, by the way, the reason that I've always pushed back on necessarily the left eight and I've put Havertz as a second striker on the tip of a diamond is because mm. I don't believe that you can pair Martinelli with another space invader. Those are two players that like big spaces, that like to run into big spaces. And while Martinelli likes to come inside, and sure, Kai can drift wide, it's not where they're best. Kai is best drifting, crashing the box, specifically. He's not best drifting wide, delivering crosses. He's best crashing the box. And when you have that dynamic of him in the left kind of central midfield role, you're asking him to make runs off the ball a la Granit Xhaka, but you don't have the second ball competency that Granit Xhaka yeah. had. And Martinelli's not going to provide that. So your mm. left back needs to. Needs to do it, yeah. so, so then the duty becomes that left back. And that, uh, again, is that Kieran Tierney? Is it Timber even? Because Timber, by the way, can invert on the left. Is it Jakob Kivior? Is it Jakob Kivior? Yes. So we've got options. We've got. Mm. A, I just do think that the left back, if you're going to play those two, has to be a lot more defensively dominant in particular. That has to be the main focus, number one. Thanks for checking out the Canon Podcast. To get full episodes and access to exclusive benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod and sign up for just £3 a month.